Every top game in the market uses this shape and you better use it as well. This shape is so important in casual games that it's present in almost every element on the screen. And the name of the shape is so fun to pronounce that on its own it sounds like a game element. Of course I'm talking about Les Quercle, which in plain English translates to square and circle. Now I'm gonna show you a super easy way to create it yourself. So let's begin. To create our beautiful squircle, which by the way you see on my camera here, we're gonna need this rectangle tool. Start clicking and dragging and hold shift so that it's perfect square. Now go to the appearance parameters and bring it all the way across. So just until you get a perfect circle. Zoom in on one of the edges and drag this knob back a little bit. Just until you see here a straight line appears between these two points. And this straight line is very important for our future manipulation of this shape. Enable the transform box by Ctrl C, right click with the mouse on the shape and choose warp. Now in the warp settings choose inflate. Bring this point down just until you have approximate shape of the squircle that you like. It depends on the visual language of your game but most of the time this is what we want. Hit enter and now look you've got a beautiful editable squircle that you can use in your game as anything you like. If you don't want to create this process every time you create a squircle then simply select the shape with a path selection tool, right click on it and define custom shape. Give it a name and now you can find it in your custom shape tool under the shapes. Next time you're gonna create this squircle, you're gonna choose it from here, just as I showed you right now. Here's your squircle and it's perfectly editable to any size you like. But let's not stop here, let's create something from this shape. And I think the easiest something we can create is a button, of course. <laughs> this whole channel started with the game button, so why not create another one? Just as a quick uh, refreshing video for this channel. And as you can see, I'm selecting it in these cross areas where I have this straight line. It will help developers in creating a nine slicer for our element. Now, when we are happy with the shape, let's think about the colors. And in contrast to what I've been teaching here on this channel previously, I want to introduce you to a new approach that you could create your UI elements. And it's by creating them black and white, by focusing on the values. So let's make this base shape a little bit brighter. Now Ctrl J to duplicate this shape. Let's change the color to something brighter, like here, like 30% gray color. And Ctrl T, enable the transform box, make it a little bit smaller, something like this. Now make this shape a clipping mask. So hold Alt and bring the mouse between the layers, click it and it will create clipping mask. And now let's go here to properties, create some feather for this brighter rectangle shape. As you can see, it already starts to look very casually. You know, this is a very casual looking UI element, or at least it's the beginning of it. Anyway, Decide on the parameters of the feather as you see fit and of course if it aligns with the visual style of your game. But for the sake of this video let's go with something super smooth, okay? just like this. Also let's keep the numbers round, so 35 for me. Now let's create a highlight for this button. Okay? Ctrl J and let's change the color to something brighter and also drop the feather so that we see what happens. And now for this highlighted shape again, Ctrl J. Bring it down a little bit, a little bit lower than our previous highlight. Now select both of these shapes with Shift and mouse. Mouse, click Ctrl E to merge them. This bottom shape that you brought down a little bit, select it with the path selection tool. Go here to the shape parameters and subtract on shape. It will leave you with this nice highlighted element. And of course make it a clipping mask. So Alt and click between the layers. And now play with the feather a bit more. 15 looks good. This base I think we can make it a little bit darker, so maybe something like this in this area of the grays. And also we can mask our highlighted part a little bit, so just create a mask here and with a round brush with soft edges go over the bottom part and erase some of it. As you can see it will create this super nice and smooth transition in the bottom part of your button. Now let's create highlighted glares on this button. And of course we're going to be doing this with this ellipse tool. So just create an ellipse on the edge of this button. Make sure it's bright. In the parameters of the shape give this feather of 2. Rotate it a little bit. Works great. Hold Alt on the keyboard and drag the shape cross and give it a darker color like this. Okay, you also can make it smaller and you also can change the feather to something bigger. Let's do 6. Feather for the main highlight a little bit bigger as well. So Three, I think were very good. Now give this ellipse a mask and also tap slightly on this edge. 
something like that as you can see it creates this very nice transition in the highlight because this is how things just look in the real world so select everything and put it in folder Control g and give this folder normal blending mode open the folder again and go to your main shape double click it to open the layer styles in the layer styles we're going to be doing some inner shadow so just click it and yeah we want it to be strong enough but not too strong so size 20 choke think 25 works great here with these parameters for the color and maybe we could make it a little bit brighter just like that of course there are no gray buttons in games well some games use gray buttons but we won't be doing a gray button we're gonna create a gradient map okay and the way we're gonna be doing it is by going here to the adjustment layer and selecting this gradient map click this color strip here so let's make a green button first okay so select some green that you like some deep green that we can use for the shadow and for the highlighted part let's select here in this area and bring it down a little bit now click this strip here when the finger appears and create a highlight for this button a brighter color and now we need to adjust these knobs here so if, as you can see if i drag the darker color down it gives my button a more highlighted look and if i drag it up colors all the dark grays with this color maybe we can make this color here a little bit darker like that and bring it down so that it's not that dark around here on the corners and maybe this central part can be a little bit more greenish with this part being a little bit more yellowish and maybe highlighted like that okay the button looks so nice and now we are missing some padding it kind of flows there now and i don't like it that much and also maybe the inner shadow it can be a little bit bigger and also let's change the angle bring it up a little bit so that this bottom part gets more and the upper part gets less now let's create a base for this button so just duplicate this first squircle that we did and copy it beneath the folder for the main button select this path selection tool and select this shape go to fill and disable it go to stroke and enable it and of course give it gray color you don't see it because we need to increase it and we're gonna increase it to somewhere here oh and we already got an effect on it because we used the same element and it had inner shadow but basically you can create whatever style you want right but inner shadow in this case suits perfectly now duplicate it again so Control j and bring the stroke down a little bit so like 60 and also let's change it to something brighter and disable this inner shadow something like that and make it a clip and mess of the bottom layer something like this and of course let's go here to the parameters and create some feather on it so it's not that sharp all right cool now let's make another folder out of these two so select both of them and Control g on the keyboard and let's also name it frame and this one color and on the frame also make sure it's normal and give this one another gradient map for the shadow part let's use this color so just copy these parameters and for the highlighted part let's use this one here now let's go to the parameters of the inner shadow that we already have and let's add another one on top of it so just like that and make it a little bit darker and the size smaller and of course we don't see it because we don't have the parameters for it in the gradient map so let's create a darker parameters for our darker color just like that and now let's go back to our inner shadow bring the distance back bring the size up something like this works great it's almost finished but we need to give this area here some inner shadow as well and the best way you can do it is by copying this squircle again here from the color part to the frame part underneath the gradient map and give it some drop shadow instead of the inner shadow play with the size of course color should be dark right cool looks great let's make it 15 this one's 60 looks fine now let's evaluate our button and see if we're missing uh, something else what we can do is create another inner shadow for the button make it darker bring the distance down bring the size down as well around 15 the choke is 25 and i think the shape is done combine these two parts here let's name this folder green button now give this button a drop shadow very dark color doesn't matter which color 
but as long as it's not completely black distance 15 size 30 works great maybe we could make the opacity a little smaller i will show you how to create variation of colors for this button create a duplicate of it and let's go for and i don't know let's go for purple now there are a few ways you could do it you could simply create another adjustment layer with hue saturation and now in just tweak this knob here but as you can see there are some parts that it doesn't work it just looks ugly and the transitions in color look bad and only few colors actually work in this way but I wanted to show you another way with the same gradient map that you created earlier. We're simply gonna change some of the parameters. And let's do it very simply. So let's leave the point where the color is located in the same place and just change this hue. Okay, so let's do this dark color will be this blue here. Brighter one will be here in this area here. The highlighted parts will be here on this area. As you can see, it works great. It was so simple, it's painful. So now let's go and adjust its saturation. And also, of course, you can play with these knobs here and adjust it the way you see fit. So maybe it needs to be a little, a little darker in the transition. So you can also do it like this you may add another knob and create some another variation in the color and make it even more saturated just like in this example so now we have our uh, i have wrote purple but let's make it blue now let's create another one and make it red because usually you have red and green buttons in your game right this is just some negative part of it go here to this uh, gradient map and again the same way the same way exactly let's just change this hue here to red this one to red this one here as well maybe to a little bit more orangey and this one as well here so something like this maybe it could be a little bit more reddish in this area so it's a very important and negative button and as you can see my friends couldn't be easier than that and i really wanted to share this with you this is the most time efficient way to create ui elements i know that for me this process that i showed you today changed the way i address the ui that i create let me know in the comment section below if this video was helpful to you feel free to share it with your friends don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel right my friends that's all for today thanks for watching and i see you all in the next one bye bye